everyone, welcome back. Or if you are new here, hello and welcome. My name is Leia. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Today I'm going to be doing a video that has been going around for a few years now. Honestly, I'm not sure who the creator of this particular, I guess you could say, tag is. Um, but I have seen numerous people do these sort of videos over the last few years, and it is the If I Could Only Keep One video. So yeah, I managed um, to pick one item from my collection for each category. Um, now, these aren't necessarily my favorites and holy grails and that sort of thing. These are things that I know if I could only buy this for the rest of my life for makeup, um, it would work and it might work. It might not be a favorite, but I know overall in general, it, it will work well and suit my needs more than maybe what a favorite might have. And I'll explain that more as we get into it. To start things off, we would have primer. And this is a favorite of mine. It's not the only one I use. I usually use a cocktail kind of of different primers, but this is one that I really like how it wears under numerous foundations. And if I can only keep um, one, I'm gonna keep a pore minimizing primer and the Smashbox pore minimizing <laughs> primer is my favorite pore minimizing primer that I have tried. So this would be the one I keep. Moving on to foundation, again, not my favorite, but overall it gives me a medium coverage and I can build it up to full coverage. I like how it wears on my skin. I do enjoy this foundation, it's just I have another one that I like more, but it doesn't give me as full coverage as what I might need some days. So, it, so the one that I did pick is by CoverGirl and the lid is gross, but anyway, it's well loved. The Outlast All Day Stay Fabu Fabulous 3-in-1 Foundation in Sunscreen SPF 20. So this is what I would pick because this works for me. I can build it up or I can leave it more sheer. I get the kind of coverage I want out of it and I like how it looks on my skin. Next up is Concealer and this is a new one that I have kind of fallen in love with um, in the last month or so and it is by Smashbox and it is the Studio, Studio Skin Flawless 24 Hours Concealer and this is definitely a favorite of mine. Um, it doesn't settle into my fine lines, it doesn't make my under eyes look dry and cakey and it's got a nice doe foot applicator so I don't need to stick my fingers in a pot and kind of like make it more emollient or anything like that. It just works really nice. I really like this concealer. Now to set all of that concealer and foundation down, I'm going to be using my tried and true Rimmel Stay Matte Pressed Powder. I am almost out of this one and hopefully next time I will remember to buy the right shade because for some reason I always buy 03 Natural and kick myself because I'm like, you need 04, I think it's Sandstorm. And for whatever reason, whenever I go to buy this, I never get the right one. But I, I make it work and I really like this powder and it works well not only to set my face, especially my T-zone, especially in those uh, summer months when I'm a little sweaty and a little more oily. This is really nice for my under eyes as well. Um, I usually use a separate under eye powder, but if I could only keep one and honestly, I don't need a setting powder for my under eyes, this one actually works really well too. Let's keep trucking along here because you can never have enough powder as far as I'm concerned. So as like a finishing and buffing kind of powder, which is a step I usually do because I am that extra usually, um, I would pick the Revolution Beauty Matte Base Powder. I really like how this makes my pores look. It's not um, advertised as a finishing powder by any means. I believe they mean it as a setting powder, but I just like how this blurs my pores. It does have a tint to it, so it does give me a little bit more coverage as well if I need it. So I really like this one as a finishing powder. Okay, what would we do now? So I'm trying to go in the order of how I would do my makeup. Sometimes I do my eye makeup first, but if I'm doing my, my complexion stuff first, this is the way I go. Okay, so bronzer. Bronzer would definitely be Kevin Aquan, um, the, I think it's a yeah, sculpting powder and the shade medium. I don't need this whole palette, but this one right here, um, it's a little light for me in the summertime, but the rest of the year it works really well for me, so I can deal with it in the summer months if, um, you know, I have to work with it a little bit more, that's okay, but it lasts all day, it looks great on the skin, it's my favorite, um, contouring powder. Next up I would be doing bronzer and I would go with the iHeart Revolution Chocolate Heart Bronzer and this is my favorite bronzer. I didn't use it all summer because it is a little bit too light for me for that but the rest of the year it is gorgeous. It isn't matte which I thought when I got this I wouldn't like it but I love this bronzer. It just has a subtle glow to it and it looks so beautiful on the skin. Definitely my favorite. Definitely the one that I would pick for my only keep one for bronzer. 
for a blush that was a hard one because I don't always pay attention to how well things last on my skin. So I kind of was looking more for shade. I don't want anything too cool and I don't want anything too warm. I kind of want it in the middle neutral. And surprisingly, I don't have a lot of blushes that are like just neutral. Most of them are one or the other. Um, so I picked something that I knew probably or I picked something that I knew I've never really had a problem with and noticed that it's gone blotchy or kind of worn off at all and it's a neutral color and it is by Benefit and it is the Rocketeur blush and it's just this shade here and yes it truly is just a natural or a neutral color it's you can see how it could go more pink or how it could go more peachy and or coral and it's just it's perfect okay next highlighter and at first I was like I don't know which one I would pick I have so many that I love um, but it came down to this one this is vintage by Jessica Lieberskin um, and it would be the shade <laughs> can I pick the whole palette you know what if I could only pick one I would pick this duo because I love it I do have a couple other highlighters from her but one's more pink and one's more peachy um, so I would pick the duo, but if I could only pick one, I would pick this. It's not super dark or anything. It's much more champagne colored, but these just look gorgeous on the skin and they last all day. Um, yeah, definitely my favorite highlighters. I didn't think I'd be able to choose one, but yeah, these, I, every time I put these on my skin, I'm always like, oh, that's so pretty. Okay. So what are we up to next? Brows. Cause if I don't do my brows now, I usually forget. <laughs> There's been times full of face and I I wear glasses most of the time so I don't even notice it but there's been a couple times where my 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 kids or my uh, husband would be like you do your brows today and I'm like that's what I forgot <laughs> but for brows I would pick if this is still available because it might be discontinued um, the Essence eyebrow designer this is in the shade 02 brown I wish it had a different spoolie it's just a uh, sharpening like a wooden pencil. I love this. It wears really nice. I like how it feels going on. I like how it wears. Um, I think it might be discontinued now because when I went to repurchase this, they didn't have any and they didn't have the sticker on the Essence display for this anymore either. So I'll have to look online to see if I can find it. I bought the retractable one that they had in its place and I don't like it as much. So if this isn't available, I do have a runner up though. And it is surprisingly a retractable pencil, which I don't usually like because I find them a little drier, but it would be the um, color pop ones and I'm not sure what they're called but they were the like the micro thin ones um, and they had like a white packaging but yeah hoping between those two I can find ones that aren't discontinued mind you this okay so after I do my brows I'm moving down I can do my eyes and I picked the Milani eyeshadow primer for my base and again this isn't my favorite eyeshadow primer so it does work well and I like it not my favorite because I find it a little too finicky but in this reality, I would deal with finicky to make sure all my eyeshadows work well. Then for eyeshadow palette, this was a little bit challenging. I knew I wanted something that I could glam up or wear neutral, but I needed something that I don't know would keep my interest as well for, you know, forever. But at any rate, the palette that I picked is by, um, you can be, that's it. And it is the mask palette. And this is a brand you can get off of Amazon and eBay and AliExpress and I am super impressed with this brand and this palette in particular is just beautiful. Whenever anyone asks, I always say I don't have a favorite color. I just really like gem tones and I feel I'm really getting that kind of vibe from this palette. It gives me some color, but I got enough little pops of neutrals in there that I can make a toned down look or amp it up. And I, I think this would be the one. I think this is the palette. I, I probably regret it and be very bored after using it with for like a month or something, but um, let's face it, I'm going to be bored using any palette for the rest of my life because I like my palettes. But if I could only choose one, this is the one, at least today, that I'm picking. I don't usually wear liquid liner, but if I'm wearing false lashes or if I just want to, you know, add a little more to a look and in this perfect... <laughs> And in this other reality that we are in, where I can only keep one out of everything, can we just say that I don't have watery eyes? Or can we just say that everything is waterproof? Or something like that. <laughs> and I don't have to run the risk of it streaming down my face and 
dark tears or anything like that because the sun's bright or my allergies are acting up because someone cut the grass or a tree is blooming or whatever the case may be. Okay, we're just gonna go with that. <laughs> so in that reality and in that case, I would be using this. And this is also one that I got off of AliExpress and it is the, what is it? Yankina, Y-A-N-K, Y-A-N-Q-I-N-A. And I've bought a few of these. These last super long. They're super black. And they're a felt tip, but they're really nice. And it's the pre and it's the pre <laughs> it's the precision <laughs> precision. And it's the pre precision <laughs> precision. And it's the precision liquid eyeliner, 36 hour. Um, I don't know. It says 100 percent black. This is what it looks like. Here, how do we get it so you guys can see it well? show you the pen <laughs> the nib it's kind of a thick it's not super thick that's what it looks like that's the swatch there I just I'm really impressed with this I like it better than most other eyeliners liquid liners that I've tried and like I said I don't usually wear liquid liner except when I'm doing lashes and that sort of thing so and this I find also holds up the best to my watery eyes compared to even the physician's formula eye booster and because I'm extra we're gonna pick a lash primer and um, I don't have it here with me right now because I forgot it um, but it would be the L'Oreal voluminous lash primer I like it better than the paradise lash primer and um, I've tried a few other brands as well and I just find I like that one the best so that is what I would pick and then for for actual mascara again in a perfect world where I don't need a waterproof mascara my all-time favorite is the Tarte Tardis Lash Paint mascara but that is not waterproof so I would pick that one if there was no chance of me ever having watery eyes or if they made it into a waterproof version that was just as good however if they don't if for whatever reason in this alternate reality that I am placed in where I can only pick one of everything and I still have watery eyes and there's no waterproof lash paint mascara. I would pick the Catrice Glam Doll Volume Mascara in Waterproof. It's a rubber rubber bristle um, wand. I talked about this I believe last month in my favorites. I really enjoy this. It lasts really nicely on me. It doesn't flake. It doesn't smudge. It separates my lashes and makes them look really nice. Is this my be all and end all? No, I am still holding out for Tarte to come out with a waterproof version of that mascara because I love it and nothing has compared to that mascara for me not even this but this is pretty close um but this is a very good mascara at least for me for waterproof and i've tried it tons of them and this is at the top of my list so i often tight line my upper lash line and you know my water line and that sort of thing or even just putting a little bit of liner on my lower lash line so for that I would pick the Smashbox Always On Gel Eyeliner now the one I have is in fishnet it's black but I would actually choose whatever their brand one is I'm not sure I don't have it but these things hold up really nicely they work really and well because I like to pile the powder on because I can't stand a tacky foundation I need something to kind of calm the powderiness down and make it look less cakey so we need a finishing spray and for that I am using MAC fix plus but I really do like this and I like how it performs and I think across the board most people would say the same thing that it works really well and yeah this is what I would pick for my finishing spray okay I think I went through everything. Let me know in the comments below if you think that I missed something because I, I tried to think this through <laughs> and I wrote it down and I keep thinking I'm forgetting something but I can't figure out what. So if you know what I'm missing, I don't use like brow gel and stuff. So um, yeah, let me know. Also, let me know in the comments below anything that you would pick if you know for sure you could only pick one. And how would you feel about being in this alternate dimension where we can only pick one item from each category? Would it make you sad? Would you be okay with it? Would you have a hard time picking or would it be easy peasy for you? I would like to know. Thank you so much for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.